Hello and welcome, this is Mouse Gunner, and this video is going to start off a series of tutorials covering the upcoming Battletech video game. The aim of the series is to explain the complex systems at play in the game in bite-sized chunks. For this video, I'm going to cover the basic information of all the different weapon systems that will be in the game. As this is information pertaining to a video game that is not yet out, some things are subject to change, which is partly why I discuss the attributes of each weapon in general terms rather than getting too involved in specifics. Throughout the video, I will display the statistics of different weapon systems on screen showing both in-game stats that are currently known, as well as the tabletop stats that are the source material of the game to fill in the holes of what is not known or as a comparison to the video game data. All of the weapons in the game can be broken down into three main categories, energy weapons, ballistic weapons, and missile weapons. The energy weapon category is mostly made up of laser weapons, but also includes flamers and PPCs. Laser weapons are the most straightforward to understand, named after the size of the weapon, small, medium, and large. As the size goes up, so too does the range, damage, and heat generation. Most actions that a mech performs builds up heat. Some heat generation can be dissipated by the mech's heat sinks, which we will go into more detail of in a future video. But excess heat will stay with the mech until it is dissipated, and if that excess heat gets high enough, it can be dangerous, causing damage to the mech or possibly forcing it to shut down, leaving the mech a sitting duck. Weapons fire is often the largest source of heat generation, and the main disadvantage of energy-based weapons are that they generate the most heat compared to other weapon categories. Particle projector cannons, or a PPC for short, can be considered the next step up from the large laser, producing more damage at greater range, also while generating the most heat. PPCs have some other attributes that make it unique, the main one being that it is the only energy weapon to have a minimum range penalty. This means that anything closer than this minimum range will be increasingly harder to hit. With that being said, the PPC's minimum range is fairly close in, but keep in mind it is equal to the range of the small laser, so it will be hard to use those two weapon types together effectively, for example. Flamers are a special weapon in this category, having the same range as a small laser. The other attributes of a flamer are hard to talk about in any detail, as this weapon currently acts quite a bit different than the original tabletop game's source material. I believe that it is the weapon whose attributes are most likely to change at some point in the future. As a result, I will talk about it generally. The main attribute of the flamer is its ability to do damage as well as generate heat for the target of the attack. The main advantage of energy weapons are their efficiency and damage for the weight of the weapon and the fact that ammunition is not required not only increases the weight efficiency of the weapon, but also allows it to continuously fire and freeze it from the danger of an ammo explosion. The downside of energy weapons is their poor heat efficiency, which is at its worst with the heaviest of the energy weapons, large lasers and PPCs. Medium lasers are good efficient weapons for medium and short ranges and are one of the most prevalent weapons in the game. The amount of damage they can do should not be taken lightly. Ballistic weapons consist mostly of autocannons, with machine guns being the only other weapon in this category. Autocannons are named by the amount of damage they do, although that is true in regard to the tabletop game, not the video game. Their names are often shortened from autocannon to AC, with the size classification following directly after a backslash. Going from the smallest to the largest, they are the AC2, AC5, AC10, and AC20. Autocannons work more or less in the exact opposite way to energy weapons, with the AC2 being the longest ranged and range reducing as size goes up. Autocannons are also much more heat efficient than energy weapons, but at the cost of being the most weight inefficient, and also requiring ammunition, which not only adds to the weight, but also opens the mech up to the danger of a possible ammo explosion. The range of the AC-2 and AC-5 is long, but both weapons also have a minimum range penalty to consider. The AC-20 produces the most damage of any single weapon and should be rightly feared, although its shorter range and small number of shots per ton of ammunition can make it challenging to use effectively. Machine guns are the ballistic weapon category's equivalent of the energy weapon's small laser, with the same range and close to the damage of that weapon. Machine guns are unique in that they are, if the current functionality of the flamer is ignored, the only weapons that do not generate heat when fired. Machine guns are also unique in that they can take ammunition in half-ton lots, although whether or not this will be the case in the video game has yet to be seen. 
Ballistic weapons pair well with energy weapons, their strengths and weaknesses work well to buoy each other. But relying too much on ballistic weapons as a main source of a mech's firepower is generally a bad idea, as the weight and efficiency becomes too great to be effective. As autocannon ammo is specific to type, for example an AC-5 cannot use an AC-10's ammo, this will have to be considered when using different autocannon types on the same mech. Missile weapons consist of two types, short-range missiles, which are commonly abbreviated to SRM, and long-range missiles, which are abbreviated to LRM. Named after the number of missiles fired in a single attack, short-range missiles include the SRM-2, 4, and 6, while the long-range missiles include the LRM-5, 10, 15, and 20. As the name implies, SRMs are shorter in range, and although their launchers fire less missiles per salvo than an LRM, each missile does more damage than an LRM missile. In the tabletop game, it does double as much damage, while in the video game, it currently does slightly more than double damage per missile. Very comparable to medium lasers due to their same range, SRMs generally do slightly less damage than the same weight of medium lasers, but at greater heat efficiency that increases with the size of the launcher. SRM-6s are extremely effective weapons within their range and should be well respected in the hands of your enemy. Long range missiles are one of the longest range weapons in the game and have a unique ability to fire indirectly at targets to hit an enemy your mech does not have a direct line of sight of. This makes it the premier weapon of support mechs, allowing them to lay down heavy fire while safe behind cover. The downside of the LRM is its minimum range penalty, which is the greatest of any weapon type, making it ineffective if your opponent is able to get close enough. Both SRMs and LRMs inflict damage with swarms of missiles, and as a result, this damage is spread in groups across different hit locations of the target, rather than all landing in one spot, like with most other weapons. This can be both an advantage and a disadvantage depending on the situation. In the case of an undamaged target, it can be a disadvantage as the spreading of damage will make it more likely the armor of your opponent will be able to absorb the damage without breaching through to internal structure. A target with already breached armor in one location is more ideal, as the chance that the missile fire will hit that section is more likely than with other weapon types, possibly resulting in critical damage. It is also possible that not all missiles will hit with a given attack, so the maximum potential damage of missile weapons are not guaranteed. Like ballistic weapons, missile weapons require ammunition to function, and as a result have all of the disadvantages that entails. Weight efficiency is better than ballistic weapons, but not quite as good as energy weapons. A quirk of missile weapons is the fact that they become more heat efficient the larger they are, with SRM-6s being more heat efficient than SRM-4s or 2s, and the other M20 being the most heat efficient of its type. Outside a slight loss of shots per weight of ammunition, the SRM-6 is a more efficient weapon than its smaller cousins. LRM systems are a little different. LRM-15s and 20s may be more heat efficient than LRM-5s and 10s, but when compared to an LRM-5, they lose out in weight efficiency. So one LRM system is not necessarily a distinct advantage over another. In addition to these three categories of weapons, another group was created specifically for the video game, called the Small Weapons Group. The Small Weapons Group consists of the previously mentioned Small Laser, Machine Gun, and Flamer weapon systems. In the video game, Small Weapons have the advantage of being able to fire during a melee attack, giving them extra utility. I hope that this overview going over all of the weapons in the Battletech video game brings with it a better understanding of the systems within the game. I recognize it is not perfect, as specific information cannot be given as details are still subject to change, but the general guidelines I have given throughout the course of this video should still hold true when the game is fully released. In any case, I hope you have enjoyed the video. This is Mouse Gunner, signing out.